Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. As you can see, I've been playing around hooking up my guitar to my modular synth and getting some interesting results out of it. Right now I'm using the guitar output into an envelope follower and then chaining that output into the sync input of a voltage controlled oscillator, which gets a great gritty hard sync type of sound. The dynamics of this system are not so great because in order to get the oscillator to track, I have to run this guitar through two overdrive pedals. So if I turn those off, you don't get much frequency tracking. So we turn those back on. You get more of a square wave sound out of the guitar, and that lets the oscillator track it much more cleanly. However, it takes all the dynamics out of the guitar signal, and by the time it gets to this envelope follower, it's really just kind of a mush and a wall of noise. So what I'd like to do today is build another Eurorack module that lets us do the fuzz and overdrive into a square wave signal right in the Eurorack. We can send the clean guitar signal with all of its dynamics into our envelope follower, and then we can fuzz that up and send that into the oscillator for sync tracking. So quite a while back, a neighbor of mine actually gave me this book, and I had no idea it existed, but I'm so glad that he did, because this is Craig Anderton's 1970s classic, Electronics Projects for Musicians, and it has got a bunch of wonderful projects in it, as well as kind of a nice primer on building your own pedals and circuit boards and so on. And one of the projects that he's got in here is what he calls the Ultra Fuzz. Now, what makes this ultra is that it's not a distortion. If we think about an audio waveform and how a normal distortion circuit works, is we have some kind of incoming audio signal. Distortion will amplify that signal. Then it will clip on the tops at some desired level, which leaves you with a waveform that much more closely resembles a square wave here. So you can see, imagine these peaks and valleys connecting to one another, you get these very sharp, distinct lines. A comparator fuzz has a slightly different principle of operation. Rather than simply clipping off the top of each waveform, you set a threshold value. And so anytime this waveform crosses this threshold, the comparator outputs either a 1, or when it goes below, it outputs a 0. So you get this series of essentially hard edges, which are just carried across until they change. And so you can imagine we have just an actual square wave here as an output. And by setting this offset voltage either slightly positive or slightly negative, when you get to the end and you have a very small wave, it's not high enough to clip this anymore. So it just goes either full negative or full positive, depending where you set the threshold. Now, one disadvantage of this, of course, is that you do end up with a DC transient at the end of your waveform. Hey, it's Feature Matthew here. No idea what happened to the audio in this clip. I think I was talking about how Craig Anderton provides PCB layouts and schematics for all these projects, of course, but unfortunately, some of the chips, the op amps that are used in this project are completely out of date and impossible to source. So I'm gonna have to redo this layout for a modern op amp. And also I wanna format it for a Eurorack module anyway. So I'm gonna do that layout in KiCad. All right, so I have translated the schematic into KiCad of the computer. I will show you now real quick. Uh, the changes I made. This is basically the same thing. I've just put in a couple of parts that are more Eurorack friendly, like a pin header for the power rather than the 9 volt battery connections. And I've changed this op amp here to a TL072, very common amplifier, which is relatively low noise. And I also went ahead and laid out the PCB. I'm quite proud of this design. This is a single sided PCB with double sided load. It's kind of unusual. Maybe it's easier to see in the 3D model if I pull that up. So you can see we've got all the components on one side. Uh, and then all of the traces on the other. And then there's a couple footprints here for the potentiometers and jacks, which will mount to the front panel. So these components are gonna be a little bit tricky to solder because we're soldering on the same side as the component itself, uh, but it shouldn't be too difficult. All these pins are fairly well spaced and accessible, except for this one right here, which is underneath the jack. So I'm gonna have to come up with something to make that work, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. For now though, I'm satisfied with that. I think it is time to print out some transfers and try and make a PCB out of this layout.
Oh, it took me a few tries and a little bit more debugging. Some of my soldering wasn't great, but I think I have finally got this working. I think we need to cut a little piece of metal and get a front panel on this module so that we can install it in the modular synth. We've got the fuzz installed in the modular synth. You can see here we've got an input and output, a threshold, and a volume control. So let's plug our guitar in. We're just coming straight out of the output of the Stratocaster. Plug that into the audio input. And then we'll take the output of the fuzz and just patch it straight out to my mixer. So you will hear the direct output. So a pretty crusty sound. So we have the volume control here, which is wired backwards, of course, because I'm very clever. But there's also the threshold. Basically, the higher the threshold is, the louder you have to play to get the thing to clip. If we turn the volume down and let a note fade out, we get a much more gated sound. When the threshold is higher. But if we turn it low, then we get more sustain. At the cost of having kind of high noise. So it gets kind of crunchy. So we will take now this square wave signal that we're getting out of this fuzz and patch it into our VCO. Plug that right into the sync input. I'll just take this VCO, we'll take the uh, square wave output and we'll patch that right over directly to the output so that we can hear what's going on. So pretty typical thing. Now if I play the guitar, So you hear we're getting something out, but the frequency is not quite high enough for it to register. So we have to actually turn the frequency up to be higher than the note we're playing in order for it to work. So now we've got the sync working, of course, but there's all this extra noise, like... When we're not playing a note, the note's still going. So instead of patching this directly to the output, let's patch it into a VCA and then use the gate output from the envelope follower. Of course, now if we play. We can set the threshold of this gate to be really clicky. Or we can set a little bit more noise at the cost of, again, having some of that output bleed through. So that's a pretty cool sound, but it's kind of monotone. It's the same thing the whole way through, right? Like... There's that same really strong fundamental note. So if we change the tuning here... We get a really awesome kind of like screaming lead sound that you probably recognize from sort of like, you know, uh, synthesizer sync sounds. That's that kind of classic sync thing. So let's send the envelope from the envelope follower into the pitch of the VCO and see what that does. That sounds awesome, but it's a bit extreme. So let's send that through an attenuator. In this case, I'll just use a mixer as an attenuator and see what kind of sound we get. Yeah, now we're cooking with gas. That's an awesome sound. That's what I'm going for. That really basically is the sound of the MF-107, which is the Moog Mooger Fugger pedal that does precisely this. It's a VCO with a sync input and distortion of some kind uh, that processes your guitar signal going into the VCO. And there's also an envelope filter that, or an envelope follower that controls the pitch of the VCO, which you can adjust the intensity of it. We can actually just take the gate signal here 
and send it to another envelope. In this case, I will use the Mutable Instruments Peaks here. So now we can set like a different attack and decay on this. And then rather than using the gate to control the volume of the signal, we will use that envelope to control the volume. Now we can do something interesting with this, like taking the release and making it long, so we hear that actually the pitch fall down at the end of a note. A little extreme, but it's kind of fun just for an effect. Now that sound may not be for everybody, I happen to personally really like it, but you know, I think it should probably best be used sparingly for guitar solos and things like that. Playing big chords is kind of a bad idea with this, because like with any distortion, it all just kind of turns into noise, but you can get away with like two note chords, especially like fifths and fourths, so you can maybe play, I don't know, a little bit of ZZ Top. One thing that's interesting about this sound is that with most distortions you kind of want to feed a lot of like a uh, heavy bridge tone into it. But with this particular sound, you really want to be on the neck pickup and you want to roll the tone all the way down. Otherwise you get a sound that's like very hard to control. Whereas if you have it on the neck pickup and you turn this all the way down, You kind of roll off some of that harshness and it makes it much smoother and easier to play. And Anderton actually notes this in his book. It's because you're taking some of these high frequency transients out, you get fewer zero crossings and fewer square waves, and you get all of that high frequency energy back when you distort the signal. So you're not really losing anything in the process. Of course, this would be a great effect to pair with a volume pedal. You could then send the FM envelope through your volume and have like kind of control over it in real time. Uh, it's hard for me to do this with one hand, but let me just demonstrate what I mean. So you can kind of control it like this. So you get the idea. I think it'd be fun to get a volume pedal involved. I don't have one at the moment, but I might order one just for that. So can we use this in a song? Let's find out. Well, I think that came out pretty well. It's a very particular kind of sound, but in the right context, I think it works really well. I hope you enjoyed that look at making a guitar synth out of a guitar modular synth and a classic 1970s ultra fuzz circuit from Craig Anderton. I don't think I'm going to upload the PCB layout I did because it's got a lot of problems. Soldering on the same side as the copper, not really a very good idea. I can see why people don't do it, but I will upload the altered schematic that I did. And if you want to have a go at making your own PCB, be my guest. I would go ahead and just try and make the PCB a bit wider so you can fit 
all of the components on the same side and then solder on the opposite side as usual. Before I go, I have to say a huge shout out and thanks to everyone who has joined me over on Patreon. It really means a lot to me to have your support. It means that I'm able to take the time to make these crazy projects, edit these videos, and share them with you. So thank you very much. And if you're interested in getting a little bit of bonus content as well as early access to all of my new videos, head on over to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. Well, I think that about does it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit that subscribe button down below. It helps me out a lot. I've been Extra Life. Thank you very much for watching.